Mr. Mike Park, IT Accessibility Specialist at MEDA, Qatar Assistive Technology Center. Thanks a lot for taking the time for this interview. And we'd like uh, first to know about your definition uh, about web accessibility. So can you tell us more about it? Sure. I, I would like to first of all thank you for having me. And uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, web accessibility means that, um, that um, everyone can access the website equally. And I'm not just talking about, you know, you know, just normal people. I'm talking about people, you know, with special needs. Uh, such as vision loss, um, um, uh, hearing loss, and um, people with physical disabilities, cognitive disabilities, all have equal access to information. And um, if websites are not designed to accommodate these kind of needs and, uh, and awareness while the developer is actually creating content, um, you put up barriers to the website. So, uh, so there needs to be a, there needs to be awareness and there needs to be uh, you know education right about um, you know about properly creating websites so that everyone can access it and that uh, AT devices of all types can access, uh, access the information that's being presented on the web. And um, it's called universal access, right? Giving uh, everyone, you know, free access to information without, uh, without running into any problems. Mm -hmm. So how does usability differ from accessibility and whether there are overlapping uh, sides to, between two, both terms? So can you tell us more about that? Um, I w uh, th there's two components uh, to a testing that we would do on uh, on a website to determine whether it's accessible or usable. The accessibility side is more uh, more geared towards uh, the guidelines uh, uh, created by uh, the World Wide Web Consortium called uh, WCAG 2.0. Uh, WCAG stands for Web Content Accessibility uh, Guidelines, and uh, there are three different levels: single A, which is the highest priority; double A, which is the second highest priority; and triple A. No one could truly be AAA compliant, but, um, but we strive for AA, and I think uh, ICT Qatar has complied to AA compliancy. These guidelines specifically tell web designers how to code and uh, how to add content and methods in which, uh, you, know, which uh, you could use to make your website more accessible. They're very specific, right? Code orientated uh, type of uh, guidelines. Mm -hmm. Where usability is uh, is uh, is is, uh, is um, for example, taking a focus group, right? And uh, the focus group could could comprise of somebody with hearing loss, or somebody who is blind using a screen reader, or or somebody with physical disabilities using like a like a switch to access the website. Um, it's basically going in, right? And um, and trying to uh, you know trying to achieve a task in a website. That task could be filling out a simple form in the website. Can it be achieved by all of the disciplines I just mentioned in our usability testing? And um, so usability is basically right, you know, what the users experience on the page and whether, you know, whether they identify any barriers or whether, uh, whether they can actually fill out a form, right, as an example. Mm -hmm. right? And um, part of, uh, par part, part of uh, the assessments that we do right, is, uh, is, is taking the best of both worlds. Right, and um, and using that to uh, to gauge accessibility, or uh, or use that to build our recommendations, mm -hmm. and um, and training usually follows after that. So, what simple tips will you give to web developers in order to make their websites accessible? Um, first of all, um, first of all, you could follow the guidelines as I mentioned, right? Which is the WCAG 2.0 guidelines. It's uh, it's broken up into four different principles. The first one being uh, uh, perceivable. A good example of perceivable is um, is like when you use uh, non-text content in a website. A good example is video. Okay, so how would uh, how would a wider range of people perceive a video? As a question, right? Um, if you're if you're hearing impaired, right, you need captioning or a text transcript. Um, if if you're blind, right. You have to make sure that uh, you know that uh, when there's no spoken dialogue, if there is visuals uh, like you know on the screen, it has to be described to them in an audio format. As an example, another good example of perceivable is um, is when you uh, when you put an image on a website. First of all, determine whether the image has any meaning or relevant meaning on the website, and if this image does have relevant meaning, you you describe it briefly and adequately, and to the point, of course. And uh, again, 
you know, the one of the biggest mistakes web designers make today is uh, that you know they will use, they'll try to describe all the images once they learn what alt text is all about, and that comes right down to usability. It's not usable when you over describe things on a page because really what really what's important is the content on the site, not the aesthetics and not the need to describe all the aesthetics on a website. Another very important thing is that uh, web designers should be aware of is, uh, is that um, when you make an image or a graphic element on your page, a link, right, it has to be described. Right? Otherwise, a screen reader user will come across it and uh, they will just hear image. And that has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. It will say image, then link. So you should adequately describe right, the destination. right? Uh, opposed to just describing what the image is because it's actually a link, right? That's an, th these, are two, these are two good examples of perceivable. Now, there's another category called uh, um, operable, right? Meaning, right, is the website operable with a keyboard when users cannot use a mouse? Uh, a good example is Flash. Right? Like you see Flash all the time, and you know nine times out of ten, Flash is not accessible with a keyboard. But um, there are white papers from Adobe where uh, where they show you how to make Flash accessible. We don't discourage people from using graphics and animation as long as it's accessible by keyboard. So keyboard is a very important uh, thing, right? And um, you know sometimes you'll see on 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 uh, on websites where um, you know. The, uh, like you have to only use a mouse. For example, like drag and drop is a function that you cannot do with a keyboard, as an example. So those are things that we have to avoid. Um, the other category would be uh, understandable, meaning, right? Use simple language in your website because um, you know if if your website is going to cater to the whole world, right? Uh, you're going to be faced with language barriers. And uh, you, may, you may be faced with people with uh, cognitive disabilities, such as uh, dyslexia, right? And um, you know, blind folks using uh, screen readers, right? Trying to uh, make out what the links are on your website. Uh, when I talk about links, create or uh, create link phrases with descriptions, opposed to just saying more or click here. Because um, one of the ways in which uh, a blind user, as an example, would, uh, would navigate a website is to list all the links in the website and, uh, and pick the links they, they choose to go to. And, uh, and they would just simply hit enter on their keyboard and they would go, opposed to going through all the content on the website. So that's why it's important that all link phrases are described adequately. And at the same time, right, you know, um, if you're going to use, uh, you know, link phrases in the content body of your document with like regular read-only text, make sure the link phrases are underlined so that uh, you know, people with uh, cognitive disabilities and uh, color blindness are able to distinguish easily, very, you know, right away, that, uh, that there's a hyperlink present in the document. And that's another common mistake uh, a lot of web designers make. Um, the last one is robust, meaning uh, you know, try to always use the most current Technologies in your website, and uh, you know one of the one of the common you know issues that we found in uh, you know evaluating over 60 uh, websites here in Qatar is that uh, a lot of the websites were still using table-only formatting as an example, and that's not using current technology. Current technology today is using the latest CSS style sheets, and uh, and you know you know while avoid using tableless, sorry while avoid using table formatting, but. Um, but just just use uh, yeah use the most current standard code pra coding practices and uh, and you should be okay and make sure that um, you know your website's compatible with the wider range of browsers that are available to to the general public. Okay, can you tell us more about the web assess web accessibility assessment uh, services that Meta offers? What Meta does is we go in and we do this like you know we do this on an advocacy basis. We don't charge for this kind of service and uh, you know. Um, we, we would like to start with uh, the Qatar government, nonprofit, and then we would move right onto corporate level uh, um, auditing services. So basically, what we do is we go in initially and look at your first and second level pages, and um, and and report on uh, on the the accessibility and usability issues, if any, are present on the website. We do a detailed report, 
right, based on, uh, you know, the guidelines and, uh, and making references to them. And then um, after that, what we would do is we would meet with this organization and discuss the report. And then from there, we would, uh, we would discuss uh, training staff. Usually, uh, usually present in the meeting are usually upper management and, uh, you know, and uh, the key stakeholders of, uh, of the website. And then, um, and then the training is more geared towards, uh, you know, the web developers, designers, people who actually, you know, are, you know, who have the hands-on in the website, content providers, uh, people in marketing and communications uh, would all benefit from this training. And, um, and this is what we do. It's all done in three stages. And um, we would encourage, uh, you know, you to contact us. And, uh, can you tell us the email with which they can contact you uh, on? Uh, my email is mpark at mada.org.qa. M Park is this M P A R K. That, that's great. So at Kitcom, uh, Qatar's I ICT conference and exhibition, you've uh, presented an award for best accessible uh, website in Qatar. What was the winning website, and how many websites did you evaluate? Well, we've we've decided to award the uh, the, the most accessible website in Qatar to uh, the Qatar Social and Cultural Center for the Blind. And um, this was based on um, uh, looking at over 60 uh, websites here in Qatar, comprised of uh, mostly government and nonprofit organizations. And um, and the, the criteria was uh, was like you know was was based on the the lowest number of uh, WCAG 2.0 single A and double A errors and um, and usability issues. Now, unfortunately, looking at 60 websites in such a short period of time. We were not able to do a comprehensive review or audit of the websites, so uh, so we just looked at a couple of pages. Right, we would use an analyzer and we would also test it for usability. Right, just basic usability with a keyboard and screen reader, and uh, and and looking at uh, you know color contrast of the website, and um, and that's how we made our determination. Okay, so thanks a lot for your time and we wish you the best of success and luck in your uh, web accessibility services. Thank you very much and, uh, and, and we hope to work with, uh, with all the organizations in Qatar and one day make it fully accessible.